we have income data, we have credit card data, we have feeds from cameras and everything else. The people who are winning in retail and other businesses are the ones who can use the data, cut it up and organize it in ways that make patterns apparent that would not otherwise be apparent. Can you see things about what people want, about what they're buying, that are not obvious if you are not seeing the total pattern of what they're doing? I'll give you the perfect example of a pattern that is very powerful and wrong. The last time I was in California to speak, it was February. I was doing Anaheim. I got stuck in Chicago because of a snowstorm. I continued on. My luggage got lost. The next day, I did a speech at 4 o'clock. I had no clothes whatsoever. I went out to Nordstrom and bought a complete new outfit from head to toe, went to the cashier, and both of my credit cards were denied. And the reason they were denied is based on all of my patterns in the past, everything I ever bought, all the places I shopped, I was not a guy who should have been spending that much on clothes in Anaheim, California. And in fact, that was correct. But for a snowstorm, I would not have been buying a suit of clothes. So the pattern was powerful. The credit card algorithm in many ways deserves tremendous respect. But the fact is, I was a guy in Anaheim, California, trying to buy new clothes. And I wasn't particularly happy that the credit card companies had turned off my credit cards. In the case of the value of risk models, we had a false sense that we knew what the risks were around housing and how housing affected the financial markets. What they purported to do was within a financial institution, say J.P. Morgan or any other bank, to take each equity, each bond, each open position, they had to put a probability distribution on it. So there is a 1% chance that over the next 24 hours, we will lose X. And that's a very precise way of measuring risk. Then they would aggregate all these individual risks, and they would say at the firm wide level, over some period of time, with a 99% confidence interval, the maximum we can lose is Y. And it, it was a single number. And if that number drops on your desk, you think, like the GPS device, that it must be right. The problem with the value of risk models was twofold. One is, who cares 99 times out of 100 what's going to happen if that one out of 100 time is bad enough that it's going to take your firm down? Right? There's far less than a point of number chance that your house will burn down or that hope that you have for home life insurance. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the models that were used to derive all these probability distributions implied in many cases that there was zero chance housing prices would drop or there was a very low chance that they would drop. So, of course, when housing prices dropped more than we expected, all the models were wrong and the firms were at risk of losing much, much more than these precise models had suggested. Most other industries, you depend on two things. One is you absolutely have to anticipate what your customers want. The dangerous thing is you don't have to, you, you don't want to know what my parents want in a retirement home. You want to know what I want before I've thought about retiring. If you build what they wanted, you might miss what's happening in the market. An inflection point is simply when trends change. We missed, we, we missed a huge inflection point, obviously, in about 2000, 2008, 2007, 2008 when the market went south on us, and if you were still making housing decisions, land acquisition decisions based on where you thought things were going in 2006, you were going to lose an awful lot of money. I would say that the winners in this business, particularly housing and data, are going to be the folks who come up with clever applications. The one, everybody's got access to broadly the same kind of data. The ones who can say, I wonder if, or what if I look at that? So, for example, we know that when people get divorced, there's a new household created, and people who get divorced are going to want to buy something. Now, how do you reach those people? Are you the one who can look at the data and say, you know what? I know not only who it is, but I have a pretty good idea of what they're going to want to buy, and I know how to reach them. I don't know how you do that, but somebody who figures it out is going to be quite successful.